To keep yourself updated, subscribe to Indigo Learn and click the bell icon. Let me say I am a student, I am in a, staying in a hostel. And recently I have joined in a company for article ship. And then I was told, like, anyways, I will be paid some monthly stipend or something. Therefore, in a month, I am new to office culture and all that stuff. Therefore, I have to buy some formals, some pair of formals. Now, in a month, generally, there are 30 days. Therefore, do you think I will buy 30 pairs of formals to go to the office every day? Definitely no. Why? Okay, there is a general process. Let us say, uh, whatever clothes I wear today, I'll put them in the basket. So the clothes of so many students will go after two to three days, they will go to the dobi for washing. Okay, they will go for washing. Okay, assume it is a rainy season. So therefore, today if you wash, tomorrow it may not be ready. They, they may take about two to three days to wash the clothes. Okay, two to three days again to wash the clothes. Two to three days to send the clothes to dobi for washing. Again, two to three days to wash the clothes. After the clothes are washed, again, let us say there is another man who comes to iron the clothes. He comes only once in uh, or tw twice a week. Once in three days, he comes to the hostel. So, he is a different man altogether. So, this Dobi, he gets the clothes to us. And once he gets the clothes, on that day, this uh, the man who has to iron the clothes may not be available. Therefore, after this, again a time lag. Okay, this man comes and takes the clothes. Again, he goes back and he has to do the ironing work. And then again, get back the clothes. Again, that may take about three to four days. Now see friends, finally I got the clothes. It took about say 10 days from the day I wore the clothes again to get the clothes in a fresh form. Now friends, if I take, if it takes 10 days again to wear the clothes again, the fresh clothes again, so what will I do? So it is taking 10 days. So if I have 10 pairs, what happens? Today I will wear one pair. The same pair I can get on the 11th day, therefore I will buy 10 pairs. But assume, Instead of 10 days, if the time taken is only 7 days, do I have to buy 30 pairs now? Not required. If I buy 7 pairs, it is sufficient because whatever I am sending for washing today, I am getting it in the fresh form by the 8th day. That is after completion of 7 days. What if I can get the clothes in 5 days? 5 pairs will be enough, friends. Therefore, my investment is reducing. Based, depending upon the cycle of uh, getting my clothes and putting them for wash and getting them in a fresh form as the number of days are decreasing also my investment in the number of pairs I have to buy is decreasing absolutely yes now coming back to the technical form here we said today if we get the raw material do you think it will go immediately for the factory to become uh, to start the process no it has to be held for a while after a while, it goes to the factory and then the work in progress starts. Now, do you think the work in progress is a matter of one day or half day or one hour? No, it again goes for days together. There is a huge process which has to be done to the product. Of course, based on the nature of the product, whatever, but I am talking generally about the manufacturing concerns. Therefore, there is a time lost also in making the product, that is in the process. Then, this becomes a finished good. Now, do you think the finished good immediately will be sold? No. For a while, this finished goods also will be held in the warehouse. Then, they will be sold. Now, will they be sold for cash? No, they are sold for credit and hence, debtors are created. And this debtors will finally become cash. So, the cash what we spent for raw material, it is held for a while in the name of raw material consumption period. The time taken for the raw material to be consumed is called raw material consumption period. Then the time taken for the work to be done to make it a finished product is called work in progress conversion period. Raw material consumption period, work in progress conversion period. Then okay it is done, the finished goods are ready. We said finished goods are also immediately not sent for sale. Therefore finished goods are held for a while and hence it is called finished goods holding period. Then they are sold, but they are not sold for cash. Hence, there is a time lag again for these debtors to realize into cash and hence we call it as debt collection period. Therefore, we have raw material period, work in progress conversion period, finished goods holding period and debt collection period. Along with that, we have the cash. These are, these are the time taken for, uh, for the entire the cash again to become cash. Therefore, this entire cycle wherein for the time taken by the cash again to become cash is called as operating cycle. You have all current assets periods. There is also a credit payment period offered by your supplier. Therefore, 
you will say this is operating cycle. How do we compute operating cycle? Operating cycle is basically raw material consumption period plus work in progress conversion period plus finished goods holding period plus debt collection period minus credit payment period. Now I will not so these four I can call as operating cycle but when at the moment I subtract the credit payment period friends I am given a delay to postpone therefore this I will have to subtract and this now I will call it as not simply operating cycle net operating cycle this is my net operating cycle. So this is how I compute my net operating cycle. Okay, I compute net operating cycle. Let us take a random example in our case. Say that my raw metal consumption period is uh, 10 days. Working progress is 20 days. So finished rolling is 5 days. And this is uh, again 10 days and this is some 15 days. Let's assume like this. Therefore, what is my net operating cycle? So 10 plus 20, 30 plus 5, 35, plus 10, 45 minus 15, 30 days. My net operating cycle is 30 days. Now, in what way is this helpful to me? Let us just see now, friends. Friends, my net operating cycle is 30 days. Therefore, in 30 days, there is a time lag of 30 days, including my creditors. Considering all my current assets also, I have a net pay period of 30 days. Now, what does this mean? Say, for example, in a year, in a year, let us say, uh, in a day, year of 360 days, The operating expenses are, in a year of 360 days, the operating expenses are 12 lakhs. Friends, in a year of 360 days, the operating expenses are 12 lakhs. Now tell me, do I require the entire 12 lakhs today? Not required because my operating cycle is 30 days. The moment I invest cash today, I will get it by 30 days, within 30 days. Therefore, I have to consider only for... 30 days or for 30 days, what will be the expense? 360 we have taken as a round figure to make easy computations. Therefore, can I say, Achha, though operating expenses are 12 lakhs, but 12 lakhs you will incur no doubt, but you don't require all the 12 lakhs today. The point what I am trying to communicate here is, though 12 lakhs is the operating expenditure per annum, that is why we said 360, instead of 365 we have taken 360 days. But I don't require all the 12 lakhs today because my operating cycle is only 30 days. Now, had my operating cycle been 60 days, what is my fate? Very simple. If it is 30 days, I will say 12 lakhs into 30 by 360. What is 30 by 360? 1 by 12. So, 12 lakh by 12 will be 1 lakh. So, if my operating cycle is uh, 30 days, I will require only 1 lakh today. This is my estimated working capital or working capital requirement. But instead, let us assume my operating cycle is 60 days. Now, what happened? Are we not taking more time? Yes, we are taking more time. Now, we are taking more time. Therefore, what happens? The working capital required also will be more. If you remember, friends, we said the more the delay, the more will be the working capital requirement. Now, you see what happened in this case. Therefore, if the case is 60 days, for 60 days, it will be 12 lakhs into 60 days divided by 360 from 0, 0 cancel 6 the requirement is 2 lakhs now if the operating cycle is 360 days that means if today you invest money you will get only after 360 days then you will require entire 12 lakhs but if the operating cycle is not 360 days if it is 180 days so you have two cycles therefore half of it is sufficient divide by number of cycles that is 2 half of it is what 12 by 2 6 lakhs is sufficient Okay, if, if I have 4 cycles, that is, in, instead of uh, 180 days, have, my cycle is 90 days. That means we have 4 cycles. If you have 4 cycles, what is 12 lakhs by 4? 3 lakhs. So, 3 lakhs is sufficient. Therefore, working capital required. Friends, don't think uh, your complete expenditure is reduced. No. Whether the cycle is 90 days or 60 days or 180 days or whatever, the 12 lakhs will have to be incurred, no doubt. But the only thing is, how much money do you require today? Now, if my working capital is 30 days, I said I require only 1 lakh. Now, compare, instead of 30 days, if my working capital is 60 days, I will require 2 lakhs. Let us assume, I do not have uh, internal profits to be used. Entire 1 lakh I have to borrow for the purpose of working capital. Now, tell me friends, is it better to borrow 1 lakh 
or is it better to borrow 2 lakhs or if the operating cycle is 180 days, is it better to borrow 6 lakhs? Definitely it is better to borrow as much less as possible. Therefore, the lesser the operating cycle, the better is for the company. Why? Because very quickly you generate cash. Friends, we know working capital is basically current assets minus current liabilities, no doubt. This entire current assets can to some extent are funded by current liabilities, not entirely, it is not possible. Therefore, the balance of requirement of working capital from where do we get? We can get it either from our internally generated profits or we can borrow or it is a combination of both. Therefore, when you are trying to borrow, when you don't have profits, when you are trying to borrow, you should try to borrow as less as possible or even in other words also, should you not generate cash as, as fast as possible? Definitely yes. Now, how will this happen? This again depends upon all the periods, all these periods what we just wrote, raw material, con raw material consumption period, work in progress conversion period, finished goods holding period, debt collection period. So, the moment you keep on reducing these periods, what happens? Your working capital cycle reduces. That is the operating cycle reduces. Now, operating cycle reduces, obviously what happens? Working capital requirement also reduces. So, this is the concept where we understand as to how to compute operating cycle and then how to compute the estimated working capital.